Alright guys, time to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and it has been brewing for a few days at this point. But yesterday the Call of Duty community went into complete meltdown. Loads to dive into today. Everyone in the scene was popping off to the next level. But is anyone actually of importance listening to what is being discussed? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It's the best thing you can do. Top of the channel reach new people. And please do subscribe as well if you have not yet already. It seems we're going to have to take the task of keeping this community afloat into our own hands. This is what former has to say kind of as a result of things yesterday seems like this was a good year to step away from cards to almost 20,000 likes we're going to dive in today exactly where this thing started to kick off what was really being said the meat of the substance and where things concluded as well there's um, I'm sure repercussions of this for the coming days that one of the biggest meltdowns I think I've seen really on the timeline since I'm pretty sure it was the first of March this year when everyone was at each other's throats but this uh, was directed really at the Call of Duty League so it starts as a lot of things have as of late with Doug Sensor Martin the Cod League would literally blow up if every team in the league streams at their practice and players simply acted like themselves there'll be a huge amount of people that will watch teams every day and it will encourage new people to watch Crystal Alliance etc etc and this sparked a fair bit of controversy right because understandably I think the players think that we shouldn't really have to stream our practice no other esport does in an ideal world there's other content to make there's other actual good things about the game like league play that we can make content on and don't have to you know stream our practice right to prop up the entire scene or the league itself and the organizations that are involved should be making their own content right to help things things that will tick along within the COD scene. Of course, that's all helped if the game is actually good and there's a thriving search and destroy scene and the things we used to have back in the day. So um, I feel like streaming scrims is just kind of propping up like all the other issues within the game. I guess it could help to some degree, but um, of course there was a lot of, uh, well, people in the replies right here saying that maybe this should be done in a different direction. As, um, well, Doug says, I see all these 48 guys, they're collecting their bi-weekly paycheck with quarterly bonuses to simply get on and scrim without thinking about the future of the game. This is something that Hex has discussed for years, really. The idea they're like look we might not yet be at the point where these players can just play the game and get paid for doing that they need to be doing other things because the fact of the matter is if these guys aren't doing their best to try and you know create content and help the league thrive like the optic guys have done and continue to do today then um you know will the league even exist in a few years for their predecessors and th those people themselves to actually still make a paycheck so i think center saying look it's very short-sighted for these players not to well create as much content as they could and such says look if the game was actually good that would become a lot more easy right to actually make good content outside of just practice how about we make a playable game that is enjoyable to create content on so fair point I think all round Clayster also doesn't fully agree my short sighted thing I've seen you tweet isn't that the league's job to encourage new people to watch create storylines etc it's a complete competitive disadvantage to stream I'm more worried about the 500k potential prize money than creating a storyline says Clay right so generally a good perception I think from the professional players that look at the end of the day we want to win really and like we shouldn't really have to focus on this type of stuff even though you know Doug thinks like is what you have to do to keep keep this league around for a few more years right because the league isn't really doing all that much helping but as Clay says like it's obvious you're just baiting for attention so things were certainly kicking off then of course Simp comes into the mix right here a fantastic thread really because um of course like at the end of the day Simp's basically saying look I could become a streamer and become a content creator whenever I wanted to but like, I'm here to win at the end of the day so um, you know as he says you know if I stream scrims we just get roasted the entire time and you're gonna stream and close your chat etc and well anyway Nadeshot this is where he first comes into the thread because Nadeshot's gonna go on a rampage here in a few minutes time that you guys are going to get ready for but um well as he says something is always better than nothing yeah i agree but i don't get paid to stream if the stream is going to mess with me winning i'd rather be a dub master than a streamer if everyone on the team isn't 100 percent comfortable with the streams on then that day of scrims is useless as well and um well as center says look this mentality is exactly why only a few people need to discover for example actually blew up on this game you know just start streaming close your chat and straight up play the game sim kind of tries to conclude it with you know i'm not going to talk in circles times were different then i'm gonna keep scrimming with my stream off and hopefully it works out for me and well, you know, Sensor comes in here with the answer hex, uh, scum for nature, right? These are, well, content guys, I suppose. And uh, well, as Sim says, they paved the way. Extremely weird of you to say this, IMO. I can become a content creator any day I want, any year I want. I want to be a champion, and that takes sacrifice. Don't talk to me about stuff you don't know about, because competitive Call of Duty is different right now. So, very um, interesting takes, really. I think that both of them have their points here. It was um, it was obviously getting quite heated. But I think this tweet from Simp especially kind of sums it all up, right? If you make a cop that isn't awful, unplayable, then more people actually might be interested, right, for the content that is being made. 
prepared because at the end of the day, people might do a road to 100 and know they might stream some practice on this game, but it's not some of the big teams. Like, are people really going to care how watchable actually is this game and how good really is it? Do people actually want to play it? I think that certainly is a large part of it. Doug kind of concludes the thread right here, but well, that is certainly not where things ended. As Clay goes on to say, I don't really get involved anymore, but trying to shift the blame of a failing ecosystem on the players is absolute comedy, right? Saying that, like, really, it should be on the league, the organizations, to keep this thing afloat. And as Octane says, players fault there's no content, like, whether that's tongue in cheek or not, we can tell from the rest of the replies. But well, of course, Hex comes in here and says, living in the only esport where it's still the player's responsibility to sustain their game. So things are really starting to heat up, really, against the CDL themselves. But, um, you know, Hex has kind of been this opinion right to the end of the day that we've got to do our best to keep this scene afloat, especially with the, well, the support that we're not really getting from the upper hand at the present time. Now, this is where Nature really first came into things. He kind of, um, well, says to Pac-Man, like, really, the idea is you shouldn't have to stream their practice. But Nature says, look, all those other games and sports you mentioned are predicated on competition first. You know, he talks about some other ones up here. And, you know, Call of Duty Competitive was built by the players' relentless love for the game, not by the structure of the game itself. Entertainment needs to be showcased. That's always been the key in Call of Duty. And that's what, really, Nature goes on to say. And this is um, quite a remarkable series of tweets, frankly, from an organization owner and from someone who's done so much with Call of Duty over the years. We literally went from players fighting for their pride and respect every single weekend to a, you know, almost 512 team bracket for $100,000 each in front of 100 gay people to no competition or tournaments until three months after the game is released. Wake up at Activision Blizzard. So, um, of course, well, the, the publishers of the game, the owners of the league, but uh, it doesn't seem like they can do both in a particularly good capacity at the moment. Nature continues, Call of Duty arguably has the most entertaining, outspoken and personable players out of any esports community. Storylines and rivalries that literally span across a decade. Vanguard releases and the league says, no, you're not allowed to compete on stream together until our first tournament in February, or our first matches in February. This is absolutely bang on the money, right? This is the reason why I'm interested in Call of Duty. It's because of the players, right? As he says, you're the most entertaining, outspoken, personable players. There's so many cracking personalities in the scene. So many great rivalries just not taken advantage of at all when the game launches. And even if the game wasn't terrible this year, like um, it still wouldn't be in a great state, I don't think, by any means. And then this is what nature says, and really like, this is like the most damning tweet I think I've seen of the day. I went to our board of directors pleading for us to get back into competitive Call of Duty. I said, look, let's spend the money. Let's give our community what they're asking for. Just trust me, I'll make sure LA Thieves is a success. Two years later, I guess I am the fool, says Nate So remarkable, really, thinking that, look, at the end of the day, I really thought that getting back into COD was going to be the thing. Now looking at the way Activision is running things makes me think I should have made a different decision and not got into Call of Duty at all, which, um, well, is quite a, frankly, remarkable statement but totally understandable in the current state of things. And, uh, well, I'm sure maybe uh, some of the new owners are looking at this thinking, wow, okay, do we, uh, well, is Call of Duty really in the greatest spot that it could be at? Certainly not. But, um, well, it's good that the owners are speaking out about this, right? Because really, those are the guys with potentially the biggest power to change some things. There was a couple of clips that came up from Nature and the other guys on stream. Like, uh, maybe I'll share one of these uh, right at the end of the video, really talking about the players. Or maybe we'll just talk about it later today because a lot of content already going through. But, um, yeah, really a lot of, uh, well, backlash to this, understandably so, on the timeline. And, um, well, you can understand Nature's frustration by right, getting into the scene and, well, struggling really to make this thing an actual success with it, well, the support they're getting from up high. But this, I thought, was quite remarkable because Kevin Hitt and Monte Cristo, they're talking about, well, the Overwatch League, the CDL right here. And um, this is especially for Monte Cristo, right? Because as Kevin Hitt says, like, if you're paying 25 mil, surely, you, you know, you'll have a reason why you're actually paying that amount of money and you can have actually a say in how the league is being run. Now, um, as Monte Cristo describes, the teams in the Overwatch League and the CDL never negotiated in their contracts to have a say in the league leadership. It's insane, but they just have to do everything the devs say and follow their employees' decisions. So um, this is kind of interesting, right? But apparently, none of these teams actually ever negotiated a term where they could have a say in what's going on. Activision Blizzard, at the end of the day, they're a games company. Like, um, in, well, in the ideal world, the league is actually being run by, well, an infrastructure of people that is kind of created to some degree by the organizations in the league, or at least run by people who know what they're doing and not by a company that has other motives, right? Rather than just actually running a competitive, a good competitive league. So um, the fact that, well, the teams, apparently, they the salesman was just so good, the PowerPoint presentations were so good, that they just signed all their rights away, and that uh, the CDL can call all the shots, and technically, even though the owners can say what they want on the timeline, they might not have any say at all, technically, in how this league is being run. That's only how it seems from the outside, which um, is, of course, quite remarkable. And of course, like, there was some reaction to this, right, and understandably so, from some of the players. As Scump says, he doesn't usually like to get involved in stuff like this, but competitive COD is down bad, and this makes me very sad, right, like, COD his life. Scump always likes to tweet out, but, um, you know, it's obviously not been the greatest time as of late, and if Scump and the other guys are tweeting stuff like this, Scump and Nature, of course, have been a bigger, well, discussion point at the last few minutes here. It's, um, well, it's not the greatest sign for the scene in general. This also is Parasite says, because he was doing
doing a lot of complaining. We know a month or so ago, they said all I did was complain. They said they weren't warranted. Well, I told you so with the thumbs up, right? As Slash says, you know, it could be a mad, mad ride for all this type of stuff. But, um, you know, as it were, Octane says anyway, you know, I'll see you guys at Bakar Shot Point later. Had a good time here on the timeline, ranting and raving about all the, the problems with the league. And we'll talk about more of these issues really later today because it certainly did not stop where we're stopping this video. But um, there's too much content for a single video, most certainly. But that really is, uh, well, the crux of the matter, really. Like, is any of this stuff actually going to get listened to? Because this tweet from X I thought was pretty good. A lot of this on my timeline, right? He's saying, um, you know, we're basically just talking into a brick wall here. Is anyone actually listening? A lot of these topics have been discussed for years, decades even, and um, really has anything changed? As I, I think we've talked about and we've touched on some of the key issues within the scene at the present time, and it's understandable why it kind of boiled over last night. And, um, you know, just before the new year, with the turn of the new year, right? So hopefully the CDL can catch at least some Ws next season. But, um, yeah, it's obviously not in the greatest state right now. And you do have to think, is anyone actually listening? There's some guys that run the league. I'm sure they were on Twitter. I'm sure they saw some of this stuff. The question is, do any of those guys actually get a say in how this league is run? Because, um, you know, are there other priorities for the Activision guys? And, um, you know, is Nature and Hex talking about this type of stuff as they have been the last several days actually going to make any impact on the way this league is run and the direction of it going forwards? Or are we going to have to go back to a point where, um, well, the players themselves and the storylines are going to have to do their very best to carry the league as they have really been for the last few seasons? And we thought that by the time you get to like year three, year four of the CDL, this will be actually in a much better spot than it was first year. Doesn't seem to be the case though. This I also noticed last night. I mean, this is just pathetic, frankly. Like, um, we're only a few weeks out from the launch of the game. There's so much content stuff that like they could be doing player interviews, talking with the new teams or whatever over these few weeks before the league builds up. And uh, well, there's been three videos from the CDL in the last month. It's just ridiculous, especially given the fact that the game came out at the start of November. Like, um, there's really been nothing to, to keep the hype involved, especially when the CDL is delaying everything so late. It's just really frustrating from a fan perspective. But, um, you know, a few other things just to mention, because I guess at the end of the day, maybe it could even be worse than it is right now, because as Krim goes on to say, imagine if this happened, Verdansk and Caldera never actually happened. Like, uh, the microtransactions, the content creators, the, uh, well, if the last three games coming out as they were, and then the pandemic as well. Could we even be in a worse spot than we are right now? It's tough to imagine, but um, I guess it is possible. But, uh, well, look, we need a little revive in the Call of Duty scene, there's no doubt about it. But this was the Halo World Championship in 2017. You guys might remember this. It was uh, being talked about at the time. And, um, well, Halo made the revive from this one, so there's still hope for the COD scene, but, um, you know, we're going to have to do our best to keep this scene alive from the grassroots once again, it seems. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit in the like button. Tell us the YouTube gods. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And I've grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you much, as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. And I will say, players definitely need to realize, wake up and smell the coffee that we, it's clear that how much help we're going to get from Call of Duty and Activision when it comes to the, like competitive infrastructure. You know, may, maybe it'll get better one day, but right now it's probably at the lowest of its lifespan in terms of involvement and support, which is ass backwards because of the CDL franchising. You would think that they'd be all in, but it's it's really trended in the opposite direction. But the players. I, I think in some ways have gotten complacent. I, 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 I think it's it's very nuanced. Do I think that players should have to stream scrims? No. Uh, I think there's a level of competitive integrity that needs to stay intact by not streaming scrims. But at the end of the day, players need to get on their grind. I mean, the salaries that players are earning, it's not always going to be this way. It's not always going to be here. It's not always going to be available to them. So I've always been a firm believer in creating opportunities for yourself. The more content you make, the more views you have, the more money you're going to make, whether that's from the contract that you have with the team that you're playing for, or if it's from the revenue and sponsors that you can go and uh, get for yourself with your YouTube channel and streaming. It, it's tough. I, I, I think it, there's a problem when Skump who is probably the most well-off when it comes to his position and his place in the stars and in, in the broader context of competitive Call of Duty, when he's the one that's streaming the most out of everybody,